What's up Megheads and welcome to another Meg Encounter story. This is a series of videos I'm doing leading up to the release of the Meg in August this year. And if you're interested in sharks, please subscribe. I've got over 20 plus videos talking about the new Meg movie and also other Meg encounters. So subscribe to the channel and go check those other videos out. Uh, today I've got three short stories that I'm going to share with you that I've found uh, on the internet. I will post the link to those in the description bar down below and you can go have a read for yourself and make your own decision. Now, do I believe in Megalodon still existing? Well, only 5% of the ocean has been explored, so the other 95%, this humongous shark could be still swimming out there. Uh, do I believe if it's a Megalodon or is it just another huge uh, other species of a huge shark? It could possibly be, so uh, it's still interesting and fascinating to hear and read the stories of encounters that could possibly be Meg sightings or something else that's out there. So let's uh, talk about the first story right now. This one took place around 1927-1928. The first sighting occurred when Zen Gray was deep sea fishing off a of Rangaroa in the South Pacific in 1927 or 1928. Glancing over the boat's railing, he spotted an enormous yellow and green shark with a square head, immense portal fins and a few white spots, considerable larger than his boat, which was around 35 to 40 feet. Some of the New Zealand fishermen on board also saw this great shark and agreed with the size that Gray had mentioned. He also goes on that he was really familiar what whale sharks look like. And this wasn't a whale shark. He claimed it was a man-eating monster of the South Pacific. So even with some of the description the man has said, it kind of sounds like it was a whale shark. Uh, but he also stated that he was familiar with what whale sharks look like. And this wasn't a whale shark. So fascinating. Um, the next one took place in uh, 1933. And this was uh, a sighting from himself as well, but also with his uh, son. The second sighting took place in 1933, again off the coast of Rangraw, aboard the SS Magnu. Gray and his son Lauren were returning to San Francisco after a fishing trip to, to Tahiti. Uh, one evening at about 5pm, Lauren was at the rail when he saw a small flock of spiralling seagulls and nearby an area of yellow water. As I first, at first I thought it was a whale, but when the great brown tail rose in the ship's wake as the fish moved away from the liner. I knew immediately that it was a monstrous shark. The huge round head appeared to be at least 10 to 12 feet across, not more. It was my belief this, that this huge yellowish barnacle creature must have been at least 40 to 50 feet long. It was not a whale shark. The whale shark has a distinctive white purplish green appearance with large brown spots and much narrower head. What we had seen was something no person had ever dreamed to exist. So that was a sighting in the, around the same area probably a few years later and this is from his son so still kind of sounds like a whale shark but who knows what it was. Um, it, it's also stated down here that the um, Polynesians in the South Pacific had a legend of a shark they called Lord of the Deep. So um, that's a, uh, a a shark that the uh, uh, the Polynesian estimates will be be around about a hundred feet long. So you know, there's legends of a shark um, swimming around out there. So could this be a megalodon or could this just be mistakenly uh, identified and it was basically a whale shark or a, a basking shark, who knows. But these are still fascinating stories and you just you don't know. Like How many times do you think um, uh, something's been misidentified? Like maybe uh, someone thought it was a whale shark and it wasn't a whale shark. So who knows, could have been large great white sharks out there. Uh, but... Uh, South Pacific is a, um, a tropical area, obviously, and it's, the, the water temperature is probably something that uh, megalodons would have liked or lived in uh, in their time and that. So, But uh, I'll leave it to you guys. You can make your own decisions. Like I said, these are stories um, taken with a grain of salt. 
Um, but uh, could Megalodon still be swimming around out there today? Now, the previous video I did about the 3 metre female great white shark that disappeared about 2003 off the coast uh, of Western Australia. If you haven't um, uh, watched that video, video yet, go check that out. It's a really interesting story where a tracking device was on a great white shark and uh, the shark disappeared. Uh, after a, a, few, uh, a couple of weeks after the tracking device washed up ashore and the stuff they downloaded or information off of that track indicated that the uh, shark was eaten by something a lot larger than what it was so make sure you go check that video out and make sure you go check out my other meg videos as well and subscribe to the channel all right guys that's it for this video thank you for tuning in uh, remember to drop a comment down below hit that like button share this video Subscribe to the channel. Until next time, I'll see you in the next video.